What's up, people? Tony here, and welcome back to another episode of TT Burger Game Reviews. And today, this is episode 137, part one of one. Yep, another single part review here, and we got a winner here, definitely, in a good way, of course. Now, those of you who played <laughs> video game stuff have definitely played fighting games. There are definitely a lot of popular little ones out there like Tekken, the Soul series, Mortal Kombat, Bloody Roar, Valorant, Toshinden, Street Fighter and them and stuff and more and more and more. But there are also some rare ones out there on the market like the original Dynasty Wars which was a fighting game not a hack and slash game, Rock'em Sock'em Robots Arena, Bio Freaks and more. And today we're going to be taking a look at a fighting game that was actually a really good one but it's it's an underrated rated, rated one and it definitely deserved more popularity than it did and it, did, it definitely deserved more because it, it's a great fighting game and we got it right here this game is made by by Ukes and it's called Evil Zone released it at least on May 31st 1999 now Evil Zone is an awesome fighting game it has some flaws we'll talk about later on but for the most part this game is awesome it's definitely lately worth, worth worth owning in your collection of fighting games field games and PlayStation games but we'll talk about that later on what makes this game so unique is that this is an anime style fighting game with, with a style and, and, and the game style play and stuff play out like an anime TV show. This was one of the first times that this happened in video game game stuff at the time of this release. It definitely showed that a lot more could be done with games like this and stuff and it definitely worked out. But let's get started here talking about the story. The story is about the evil Ihadoka, which is a powerful being that exists in multiple dimensions, who is confined to the dimension called the Evil Zone due to her many ways to threaten to take over the world and to destroy the world. Now a tournament is held with eight words started to destroy Ihadoka before she can threaten the world once more. The story is played out like an anime TV series that's broken up into episodes with voice acting and cutscenes in it, of course with like a beginning scene before the fight and an ending scene and stuff too. And the story may have been done we to death, but the way the, 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 the game tells the story and the style it is, makes the game very unique and worthwhile. In this review, we'll be playing as three different characters. Satsuna Saizuki, who is the main character, the Japanese schoolgirl. Ero Plauze, who is an, who's an actress, mercenary. And Midori Himino, who is a martial artist. Each character has their own story and setup to where it builds up to you facing the evil Itadoka at the end. And of course you also have Paul Lighting as the as the narrator, narrator of the story to, of the opening cutscene stuff and you know everyone knows who Paul Lighting is stuff and who know who he's from, he knows Colonel Roy Campbell from Metal Gear Solid there but that's kind of off topic. Now let's get back on track here, the graphics for its time were amazing, like a lot of details went into the graphics, like it has, it has like, as I said, the character model, the model is close up where like has to show their hair moving and their arms moving and even shows their, their mouths moving too and Back in the back in the day, like for the PlayStation, it was very rare to find like like in-game graphics to be like good where it showed the mouths moving and stuff. So it definitely it definitely worked out there. Definitely, and it showed a lot of care went into it. You got great and colorful backgrounds as well, along with a smooth frame rate. And of course, you got the opening cutscene, which is like an anime-style cutscene, and that looks great as well. For sound. Sound is good, but it could have been better. Like we do have great music that fits the anime fighting game game style uh, for the game, and it fits perfectly. But the voice setting, however, is not so good. I mean, it has well-known actors like, like Paul Lighting, who was part of Camel from Metal Gear Solid, and John St. John, who was who was Duke Nukem along with and Big the Cat and Sonic the Hedgehog. But the thing is that the voice setting is just not so good. I mean, first off, the lip singing doesn't even match up to the English. It's it, it syncs up to the Japanese. Of course, there is no Japanese needs audio in the, on the disc because, because of how much space the PlayStation Edition disc had. But it would have been better for them to just keep it in in the Japanese needs voice setting. It would have been better. And also, I forgot to mention that, that there's also some some censorship too in this game too. Like Errol's costume was, was changed stuff that there's some censorship in the game too. But it's not that much censorship, so that's okay. But the sound is okay for the most part. Just could have been better with the voice setting is what I'm trying to say. Now for the gameplay. The gameplay has the three A's, amazing, awesome, and a lot of fun. This is a two button, a two button, button type, type of fighting game where you have like an attack and a block button where like, it was just, it was just with the type of controls and makes it easy, simple to pick up and play. It does amaze me that you can do so many, many, many attacks with just one button and stuff along with a bunch of combos too and of course like with the blocking and stuff. And the, the controllers are simple. Although they can be a little stiff at times there too, but when the characters move and everything, so just staying there. And you have a bunch of special moves that you can perform with this one attack button, and like I said before, it's just amazing that like they do that. 
The opponent AI, for the most part, is good, but they can be very cheap near the end, especially with the, with the final boss, Eight Hadoka, which she's overpowered and can and can just just attack you mercilessly, like giving you a chance. But she is beatable, so it's not like 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 like, like, like impossible like it was with fucking Criticom and Cardinal Sin and Versus and all that stuff, or Killing Zone. So yeah, that's different there. And, and, and like I said, just amazed me on, on how on how well the, the, the controls were implemented and how, how well the gameplay was, was implemented too with this because they showed that they that a lot of care and effort went into this and stuff and it definitely showed. And you also have a load of extra you can unlock as well, like narrator mode and like um a bunch of like extra options and stuff too for you for you to play when when, when you when you beat the game. And you can also play as Eat Hadoka when you finish the story mode with every character and like um of course, I'm playing through the story mode here, but you also have like the arcade mode too, and verses and stuff, which, which is, which is, of course, you're gonna expect in a fighting game. And just so much content on one disc, and just maybe how much care never went into it, like I said before. But now I gotta talk about the bads. Like I said, the controls can be stiff at times, even though they're simple. And the final boss, Eight Hadoka, can be overpowered and cheap, and it can be a little bit hard to pull off some of some of the special moves and stuff because of like um the way the the, the controls are a little stiff and stuff. But for the most part, I don't really have a problem with this game at all. And it's a shame that, that this game did not get a lot of popularity because it, it's definitely worth it in the end. And aside from that, though, there really isn't much else to say. I mean. It's an amazing fighting game, it's an awesome fighting game, and it's a fighting game that's a lot of fun. The, the three A's is what, what, what it is. And it's definitely with only a collection of fighting games, video games, and PlayStation games to be exact. And the game is not very expensive either, so if you, if you can find it, it's not, it, it won't be for a super high price and stuff, uh, and stuff online and such. So that's just saying there. But, what's my, my final rating here? If you can if you can find this game and and, and, and you and you like fighting games, definitely with owning your collection because it's worth it and stuff. I'm gonna take some points off for, for the complaints I have with it, but the score I'll be giving it is in eight out of ten because some of the problems there could have been fixed, but still it's definitely worth owning your in your collection of fighting games, stuff definitely. And that's pretty much it for episode 137, part one of one. Those of you who like to see here. Subscribe, like the video, comment down below, and don't forget to join my Discord group, TT Burger Game Week's 90. Here's always looking for more people to join. The link is in the, the, the description below. And if you have any requests for me to for, for, for me to review any game stuff like that, you're welcome to comment bent that down there too. If you want me to meet me, me, me to review any games you want what you like and stuff. And that's pretty much all I gotta say. This is Tony. Peace and out. Have a great day. See you all in episode 138. What will that episode be like? Find out. That's all I'm gonna tell you. That's all I gotta say. Peace out.